Hello, everyone. Thanks for joining us. Uh, I'm Eric Meyer, co-founder of An Event Apart, and I'm being joined today by Tom Greenwood, who's a, a, a new speaker at An Event Apart. So, Tom, thanks for joining us. Thanks for having me. Yeah, we're, we're really looking forward to this. Um, and uh, I want to talk about what you're going to be talking about because I think it's a really great topic. But first, um, could you introduce yourself to the audience, um, sort of how you got started and how you got to where you are today? Yeah, sure. So um, I'm the co-founder of a, an agency in London called Whole Brain Digital. And it really started, I mean, 2007, we started the agency. And that was the point at which I kind of moved from product design, as in industrial product design, which was what I was doing before, um, and moved into the world of digital, um, really as a way of avoiding all of the environmental impacts of designing and manufacturing physical stuff yeah. um so that was kind of my my move into digital it was like the utopian future of the <laughs> digital world <laughs> um and how'd yes. that work out <laughs> <laughs> i'd say 50 50 <laughs> oh. there's a lot of good um there's a lot of good I, and i and i love digital i think there's a lot of um amazing things that it offers to our lives um but it's not as but it's not as utopian as i thought um you know mm. the more you get into digital the more you realize that there's actually a lot of um a lot of care that has to be given to the way that we use it yeah okay what kind of what do you mean by that what kind of care um well i mean just relating to kind of how i got into it there's a huge environmental impact of digital technology um which is what my book sustainable web design um, is all about that I wrote for a book apart, but it's and it's also related to the talk that I'm giving here on zero waste web design. But I think also there's other issues, you know, like privacy and security and accessibility and inclusivity and, and all of these things are things that um, that actually I was aware of in the physical world. Um, you know, I learned about them at university when studying industrial design, um, and they're concepts that go back decades in terms of like physical product design. Um, uh, and it's interesting seeing how they, they, they all fit into digital design and development um, just in different ways. These hmm. concepts are just as applicable to kind of the, the new world. Yeah. What, do, what would you say digital does the best on among those various things? Um, <laughs> well, it definitely does. It's very different. I think one of the things I've learned is that we try to compare like physical goods and services to digital goods and services. And the more you really start looking into them, the more you realize that they're not really comparable. Um, like when, you, hmm. and, and so it, it's hard to actually make a direct comparison, but I would say in many ways, like digital is far more energy efficient than like making physical stuff. Like it is much better than us like consuming loads of stuff. Um, the downside of that though, is that we then consume way, way more of it because it's easier to, you know, we, if you think about email as a great example, like we used to not send that many letters and postcards to people. <laughs> okay. So email is way more efficient than sending somebody a letter in terms of its environmental impact, but we send billions of emails a day as a society. Whereas, um, you know, globally, we only send a few billion letters in the post in, an, in, in one year. So um, it's, it, that's the thing. It's hard to make these comparisons because actually it opens up lots of new issues that perhaps um, we hadn't thought of before and, and, and they're not necessarily directly comparable. Yeah, so when you say we consume a lot more, you mean like information wise? So. Yeah, exactly, exactly. And it's so much easier to just be consuming data um, on the go, even now, like multiple devices at the same time. Um, it seems like there's almost no ceiling on how much, how much data we can consume. Whereas with physical goods and services, individually they have a really big impact in their like manufacture and their um like disposal end of life and so on but but actually there's kind of a natural limit to how much we can physically can buy and use um the physical things right so i'm going to ask you do you have all of your notifications badges turned off yes and you're it's okay so like no notification badges no and why is that because they're distracting. Okay. 
that's my primary reason yeah okay i would say there is one app that i have that does pop up every now and then uh, <laughs> macrium reflect i can't, can't get rid of it <laughs> mm. okay yeah. yeah so that it draws focus away from you know work yeah. or life or whatever it is you're doing yeah. yeah i'm i'm very much the same there are there are a couple of apps that i've left the notification badges on for but um yeah i one of them is there's like a group in slack that i've yeah. left notifications on for but it's because it's really the if somebody's posting in the slack group it really it needs to be paid attention to quickly yeah yeah, um, yeah. for whatever reason right but yeah i'm i tend to be the same way and my stress levels went down when i noticed yeah. disabled notification badges um even though Definitely. i think they sometimes i wonder if maybe i distributed the stress a little bit to other people because then, <laughs> they're wondering like, where's eric right like, why has he not answered but um yeah i mean I, I think i've i've tried to to make it so that like i said with the with the slack channel like you know if the website's down someone's going to ping in that channel and i'll get a notification or whatever yeah definitely i i find like on my on my computer it's primarily i have them switch up primarily so that i can actually do deep work and mm. not be distracted all the time not, on my yeah. phone i have them switched off more because of that kind of that mental health aspect that because mm. my phone is is with me most of the time even when i'm not working i yeah. find it really hard to get away from and yeah a bit like you said my stress levels have gone down from having the notifications switched off and and there's certain things i know to pay attention to like right. there's certain things where i know that like okay somebody's likely to message me around this day and time i'll have mm. a look i'll just i'll just check in and see if they said anything right. and, and people will and i always just tell people i'm, I'm not looking at notifications so if, if i don't reply phone me <laughs> yeah yep. <laughs> exactly um so we talked about what digital's sort of best at but what is it worst at oh what is it worst at amongst the things that you know you you were trying to get away from in product design like i guess in some sense in what way does digital either replicate or even exceed the drawbacks there or, or, or just in general what's it worst at yeah i mean i think it's i mean privacy is definitely definitely up there okay i, I think most unless they're connected devices which i think is like where these two worlds meet um mm -hmm. then i think that the you know physical products are, are relatively inert from a privacy point of view in general um Whereas um, digital is like privacy invasion is pervasive, and and now that you know these two worlds are meeting, it's it's becoming even more pervasive. So um, yeah, I'd say that's the the biggest issue. Yeah. So I have to ask, and we'll exclude smart TVs from this. Yeah. But how many connected devices do you have? Ooh, hang on, let me count. <laughs> uh oh, it's not it's not too bad. Uh, I'm gonna, without counting my wife's, I'm gonna say about five. Hmm. It's not too many. I don't actually have, um, I don't have like an Alexa or Google Home or anything like that because I feel like it's just kind of creepy. Um, yeah. and, and I, and I don't need it. Um, but yeah, I've got like, you know, connected hard drive and sound system and, phone okay. tablet <laughs> so you're avoiding the internet of things is what i'm hearing yeah that's my car's connected yeah i missed that one. Oh, okay yeah, yeah it's uh, um over the air yeah like updates and stuff yeah. can i ask what model of car is that it is a tesla model s okay yeah they're very connected they're very connected yeah. <laughs> although although not where i live because my house is in like a, a mobile signal black spot um oh. so it actually i have the opposite problem where i get in and it has tried to connect to the mobile signal so many times it's given up um and i then have to then have to reboot the car <laughs> uh, which is a problem i've not heard anybody else talking about but it's, if you live in a if you live in a black spot then uh, it does happen every now and then yeah and i had to reboot my car it's just I mean, <laughs> yeah I, I suppose it's it's not as weird as uh uh i had to reboot my washing machine or yeah yeah um, which is or, i think is, is the sort of thing we'll hear people saying in years to come 
Yeah. And uh, I don't know, do you follow Dan Hahn at all? No. Okay. So he, he just had a, a tweet go viral not, like just a few days ago where basically his smart refrigerator had emailed him to, to say that they'd been opening the door too many times. <laughs> okay. And he was like, what the hell? My, <laughs> my refrigerator emailed me to say we're opening the door too much. Um, you've been which, <laughs> yeah, was a little, a little weird. Um, yeah. But yeah, it's, you know, at some point it's like, well, so I had to, I had to reset the fridge to factory settings. Um, and <laughs> what? It's just a refrigerator. Just supposed to make things cold. But yeah. Um, so uh, as you said, you're going to be uh, doing a talk uh, at the fall summit on yep. um, uh, zero waste web design, yep. I believe. Yeah, that's right. What, what does that mean, zero waste web design? So what it means is, is it means looking for where we're wasting resources, whether that's like computer resources, whether that's like data storage, whether that's mm -hmm. people's time, um, okay. whether that's money. Um, basically, like go using the lens of zero waste, like the zero waste lifestyle movement that has kind of kicked off um, well, mm. I say it's kicked off, it's been going for decades, but it's really started to kind of get attention in the last few years where people are trying to live their lives without producing trash um, that's going into landfill and incineration and trying to live in a way that is um, just avoids waste by being proactive about the decisions being made and taking that lens into the web design process and saying, okay, where are we, where is waste happening and where can we strip it out and what might the benefits of that be? Yeah. Um, is there is there a particular uh, area of that that we're, as an industry, sort of the worst at, in your opinion? Or is it more distributed, sort of more balanced? Um, yeah, I mean, <laughs> well, I think I think there's what what I found when actually when when putting this talk together was that I ended up finding waste in a lot more places than I expected and, and, and ended up not being able to fit it all in and <laughs> having, to, okay. having to try and cut it back, um, which was, which was kind of funny. Um, but I think, I think, um, I think images and images and video are definitely like kind of huge sources of, of waste of data. Um, I'd okay. say, and, and I think that feeds into other things particularly, um, my waste of data isn't just an issue of like computer resources and, like energy it's also you know it wastes people's money it it mm. it can have um it it can affect the, the like least privileged people the most because they have the slowest connections the slowest devices they have the most expensive connections relative to their incomes and so on yeah. um so so i think yeah those like really big hitters from a data point of view are like mm. um, okay yeah no that makes sense worth looking at yeah yeah um, I had an experience a few years ago. I was at a, a school in rural Uganda and uh, they only had satellite internet as an option. Right, yeah. And they had, I think it was for the whole school, 50 gigs a month, I think. And so, yeah. And when, it, and when it's gone, it's gone, right? Well, I, I, th I, think, I think there charges? were over, there could be overage charges or they, or I think it was sort of, they had to make the choice. It was like, yeah, yeah, we have no more internet for the rest of the month or we can pay more, but yeah, I mean- it But was, either way, it's not good for them. Yeah, it was not great. Yeah. And so um, there were a lot of, like they had done work to, to, to do local caching as much as possible. Yeah. Um, so that if somebody hit a page, then it would be locally cached. So if somebody else went to that page, they wouldn't have to go over Relo the yeah, satellite yeah. connection. But yeah, and the, as, as it turns out, um, the speed of light, fast as it is, if it has to go up to orbit <laughs> back down, your ping times get kind of long. Yeah. <laughs> so, um, like the speed of light becomes a factor in in internet connections. That was a that was that was one of those experiences where it was a, you know, I've always known that this was an issue, but now I yeah. have experienced it. Now I've sort of I haven't lived it in the sense that they do, but I've you know I was there for several days and it was one of yeah. those. You know, it's like, hey, we'll just pull up this Wikipedia page. It's it'll it's loading. It's lo okay. Well, there's the text. Okay, cool. Right. Exactly. Kind of stuff. Um, yeah. 
and I've, I've seen other people who's like, yeah, I, I, I'm back from my sabbatical backpacking through Tibet. And let me tell you <laughs> about my mobile internet experience. Um, yeah. Yeah, yeah, or, yeah. Or someone like you who lives in a dead spot. So nobody can call you. When the yeah, no, I'm just <laughs> <laughs> it's true though. I mean, we, we spend so much time designing for like the best case scenario. Um, yeah. And well, because we're usually in the best case scenario. Exactly. You know, I and work I, from home, but I have hypothetically, I have gigabit Ethernet, although it's never that fast, but I have many hundreds of megabits. Um, and yeah, the having to remind yourself, oh, it's, it's not going to load this fast for anybody else. Yeah. Right. Because yeah. this is as good as it gets. <laughs> it's, it's basically as good. Yeah. Unless I were you know, literally in a backbone server room directly yeah. plugged in. Yeah. It was about as good as it gets. But uh, yeah. So, uh, I mean, we're going to hear more about this at uh, the Fall Summit, which is uh, coming to a device near you October 11th through 13th with 15 sessions. We got QA with the speakers, including Tom. Um, uh, special after hours sessions, all, all kinds of stuff. And uh, yeah. Um, it's going to be good. It's going to be good. And I'm really looking forward to it. And I'm really looking forward to, to hearing more from you. Cause like I said, this it's the first time for Tom at an event apart and uh, we're, we're really excited about it. So Tom, thanks for, for joining us at an event apart. Thanks for being part of the show. And, and also thanks for uh, joining me today to talk about all this stuff. That's my pleasure. I'm really excited. Awesome.